Hi, I'm Karen, and I'm going to talk about Nancy Drew books. I started reading Nancy Drew books when I was in elementary school. I loved everything about these stories of the teenage sleuth. Nancy was so smart, independent, and full of self-confidence. She always knew what to do in any situation. The mysteries were intriguing and very exciting. The books I read had dark blue tweed covers or covers with an interesting colorful picture printed right on the front. My copies belonged to my mother and an older cousin before me and were passed on to other readers when I outgrew them. They got me started on a lifelong love of books and reading and mystery books are still my favorite books to read. As an adult, I came across some well-preserved copies of Nancy Drew books at a used bookstore. I bought them and it turns out I never really outgrew them. I still enjoyed them and began seeking them out to build a collection. Once I started looking for Nancy Drew books at used bookstores, I found them easily. Some were badly damaged, had been written in or smelled moldy. Some were as good as new. Some of the beat up ones were pricey, others were not. I began to do some research about the books and I learned a lot of interesting things about the history of Nancy Drew. I learned that the idea for the Nancy Drew books was created and developed by Edward Stratemeyer, who was born in 1862 in New Jersey. He was a prolific writer who published books and serialized fiction for children and young adults under more than 30 pen names. In the early 1900s, he developed a business model for publishing books that became greatly successful. He came up with ideas and outlines for stories and hired ghostwriters to write them. He paid his writers a flat fee for their work and then he sold the stories to publishers, but held on to the rights to the stories himself. The ghostwriters were not supposed to reveal that they had written the books at any time. By the time the first three Nancy Drew books were published in 1930, the Stratemeyer Syndicate had already had great success with such series as The Bobsy Twins and The Hardy Boys, as well as many others. He established a guideline for his ghostwriters to follow, which included five basic rules. Each book should have 25 chapters, with each chapter ending in a cliffhanger. No touching or kissing. No upsetting violence. But characters could be knocked unconscious, but no more than once per book. And action had to be intense enough to require exclamation marks. The first ghostwriter of the Nancy Drew books, a young woman from Iowa, Mildred Wirt, later known as Mildred Wirt Benson, wrote 22 of the first 25 Nancy Drew books under the pen name Carolyn Keene. All subsequent authors of the Nancy Drew books wrote under the name Carolyn Keene. Mildred Wirt Benson had a very interesting life. She was an independent and free-spirited woman who wanted Nancy to have the same qualities. If you would like to read more about her life, this book is available at the library and covers her adventurous life and the life of the Stratemeyer family in detail. Edward Stratemeyer died a few weeks after the first three Nancy books were published. His daughters took over the business, Harriet Stratemeyer Adams, and to a lesser extent, Edna Stratemeyer Squire, successfully managed the syndicate and kept producing the Nancy Drew books. Harriet was devoted to the Nancy Drew series and took over writing the volumes after Mildred Wirt Benson stopped writing for the syndicate. Harriet also revised all of the Nancy Drew books published before 1959. They were revised to modernize the stories and to eliminate some of the ethnic stereotypes that occurred in the original text. Nancy Drew books are readily available to collectors. They have been published in many formats, some still being published today. Just a few examples of the various formats include the Nancy Drew Mystery Stories, volume one through 56, which were published in hardcover between 1930 and 1979. The series continued with volumes 57 through 175, which were published between 1979 and 2003.
124 volumes of the Nancy Drew Files were published between 1986 and 1997. Nancy is more modern and there is more romance. In 2013, the Nancy Drew Diaries series started and this series continues to be published. Volume 20 is set to come out in June of 2020. In fact, a special box set of some of the diaries will be released later this year in honor of Nancy's 90th anniversary. Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys Super Mystery were published between 1988 and 1998 and had 36 volumes. There are several Nancy Drew series for young children. The Nancy Drew Notebooks and the Nancy Drew Clue Club feature a young Nancy and were first published in 1994. And the Nancy Drew Clue Book series started in 2015 and is still being published today with volume 14 due out this year. There have been Nancy Drew movies, a graphic novel, a cookbook, TV shows, board games, computer games, stationary items, jewelry, fabric, and other accessories. If you like Nancy Drew, there are almost endless collecting opportunities. So what do people look for when collecting Nancy Drew books? Any and all of the above. I like to collect anything related to Nancy Drew, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I will talk about collecting vintage copies of the first 56 books in the original series, published between 1930 and 1979. I especially like these because the ones I read as a child were from this group. When I buy one, I am mostly looking at the condition of the book. It must be what I consider readable. I don't mind a little damage, and I like the way old books smell, but I stay away from any books that smell moldy. In book collecting, older volumes are often more valuable than newer, with first editions of a book being the most valuable. Since Nancy Drew books have gone through many printings, it is often hard to date individual books using the copyright date listed in the book. That date is the date the book is first registered with the Library of Congress and does not change until the book is revised. The first 38 books in the series were published in blue tweed hardcover with a dust jacket between 1930 and 1956. Each book went through several printings. The first Nancy Drew mystery, The Secret of the Old Clock, has gone through more than 150 printings. You may have a copy whose copyright date says 1930, but it may actually have been printed in 1950. Since the printed copyright date in the book is not reliable, collectors have developed other interesting ways to figure out when the book was probably printed. You can look on the dust jacket or inside the book for a list of books in the series. For example, this copy of Nancy's Mysterious Letter has a copyright date of 1932. On the front flap of the dust jacket is a list of other Nancy Drew books. The last book on this list is The Clue in the Old Stagecoach, which was copyrighted in 1960. So this book is probably from 1960. The first 38 books in the series were published in a blue tweed hardcover with a dust jacket between 1930 and 1961. The earliest editions had dust jackets with white spines. Later ones had dust jackets where the photo wrapped around and continued onto the spine. Dust jackets are often missing, but the color of the blue tweed can give collectors a clue to the age. Medium blue covers with dark blue lettering was common in books printed in the 1950s. In general, volumes with dust jackets are more valuable than those without. Another clue to the date of the book is the appearance of Nancy's silhouette on the cover of the book. Books printed in the 30s until 1946 show Nancy with a magnifying glass, wearing a scarf and high-heeled shoes, with a shadow under her feet. From 1930 to 46, the ink is orange. From mid-46 until 61, dark blue ink was used. Books printed between 47 and 61 no longer have the scarf or shadow, and Nancy is now wearing low pumps. 
Books printed after 1962 have a picture printed directly on the cover of the book and yellow spines. With the newest versions having a glossy cover and a picture of a flashlight on the top. Here are three versions of The Secret of the Old Clock illustrating the cover art, which some people actually focus on when they are collecting. The early editions of the books were illustrated by Russell Tandy from 1930 through 1950. Bill Gillies revised some of Tandy's jackets in the early 1950s. From 1950 to 1979, they were mostly illustrated by Rudy Nappy. The various end papers used in the books can also serve as a clue to the age. The first three books published in 1930 were known as a breeder set and plain white end papers were used. An orange silhouette of Nancy with a magnifying glass with three girls nearby was used from 1932 to 1948. Dark blue ink was used from 1947 to 1952. From 1952 to 1958, the end papers show Nancy standing behind a tree watching a man digging. From 1958 to 1961, multiple illustrations on a blue background were used. These are just a few examples of how you can date a volume. If you are interested in collecting Nancy Drew books or other vintage children's books, they are easily found online. While the very rare first editions of the first three Nancy Drew books can sell for thousands of dollars, you can find a good condition readable book for under $10 very easily. I prefer to shop at used bookstores where I can see what I can find. Like finding a book at the library, it is like a treasure hunt. If you are not sure if you want to start a collection but would like to read Nancy Drew books, the library has a good selection. Until the library reopens, you can check out what is available on Libby and Hoopla. When the library reopens, you can check out Nancy Drew Mysteries, Nancy Drew Diaries, and Clue Club books in the children's department. There are also several nice reproductions with original artwork and illustrations published by Applewood Books of some of the original texts. I hope that you have enjoyed this overview of Nancy Drew Mysteries and that you will be encouraged to do some sleuthing of your own into vintage and modern mysteries. Thank you for watching.